Coming up on Network Africa. U.S. President Donald Trump pledges strong support to Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi as they both promise to fight terrorism together. Strong earthquake hits renowned game reserve in Botswana. And new industrial parks in Senegal eye millions of jobs from Chinese work. Hello and thanks for joining us on Network Africa. I am DC Adebayo. U.S. President Donald Trump has shown his support for the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, saying that he strongly backs Sisi's leadership and that both countries will work together to fight Islamic militants. This comes as President Sisi holds his first official visit to the White House since coming into power in 2014. Egypt has long been one of Washington's closest allies in the Middle East, receiving 1.3 billion U.S. dollars in U.S. military aid annually. The country is fighting an Islamic insurgency in Sinai, and hundreds of Egyptian soldiers and police have been killed fighting insurgents. President, El President El Sisi, he's done a fantastic job in a very difficult situation. We are very much behind Egypt and the people of Egypt, and the United States has Believe me, back in, and we have strong back in. We are uh, very much, and as you and I will be soon talking, uh, we are building up our military to a level that will be the highest, probably the highest that we've ever had. Uh, plane orders, ship orders, aircraft carrier orders. Uh, we are rejuvenating our military to the highest level. I think in these times, probably more than ever before, or certainly almost more than ever before. That's what we need. And I just want to say to you, Mr. President, that you have a great friend and ally in the United States and in me. Thank you very much. And in South Africa, President Jacob Zuma is under pressure to step down from office as some citizens say he is no longer the right person to lead the country. The latest call is coming from the country's powerful trade union federation, COSATU. The trade union, a key part of the governing alliance, has 1.8 million members. Mr. Zuma has faced intense criticism following a major cabinet reshuffle, which included the sacking of the trusted finance minister, Pravin Gordon. And that decision led to South Africa's credit rating being cut to junk status by Standard & Poor's, putting more pressure on a troubled economy. Well, let's get more on this story from a market analyst based in Johannesburg, South Africa, Owen Nkomo. You're welcome to the program, Owen. Thank you so much. How are you? Very well, thank you. Now, let's begin this conversation with the credit rating downgrade by Standard & Poor's. How is the South African government reacting to this? Well, uh, we are all really doing our best to, to manage the situation. And I think the ministry is responsible, the presidency and uh, the Minister of Finance under the new Minister of Finance, Minister Manusu Kigaba, have issued statements already. And, um, yeah, for the rest of us, we are still very concerned because we believe we did not need to be downgraded. Some decisions could have been made differently, which unfortunately didn't happen. And um, so we find ourselves in a position where we are now junk. Uh, well, we understand that the new finance minister, that's Malusi Gigaba, says that the S&P Ratings Agency has already taken that decision to downgrade South Africa's credit rating to junk status by the time he started his job on Friday. How true is this? No, look, I mean, I think there's, there's varying opinions in my view regarding that, and it really depends on which side you're looking at. But um, I, I can safely say that the country is is very concerned about the developments. We, we wish that there's a way we could find um, a reversal of this whole process so that um, our sovereign rating could probably, in the next coming 10, 12 months, 
look a little bit different than it is. Because I believe that um, this has been made basically on the political side or political risk of the country. Uh, we are still able to service our debt. Um, but if things continue this way, I think there could probably be a challenge in terms of servicing the debt going forward. You know, one question that I'm sure is on the mind of every South African is how will the junk status affect an average citizen on the streets? Well, I'm sorry, please say that again. Oh, when I was asking that, I mean, enough has been said about this rating, but I'm sure that South Africans want to know how this junk rating will affect the average citizen on the street. Yes, most definitely. I mean, uh, obviously the interest rate cycle is not going to look as great as what we were starting to anticipate about a month or two ago. Uh, so we could start paying more for, uh, for our loans, for our cars, etc. And, uh, you know, generally, I think if the rent doesn't firm up, we could have the risk of our inflation continuing to tick up, which obviously is a challenge, especially because, um, you know, we import quite a bit of stuff that's used by, by the people that are unemployed, you know, food and energy, etc., etc. So all of those things, in my view, are a big challenge. Well, Owen, before I let you go, the South Africans have severely criticized President Zuma's controversial cabinet reshuffle with a lot of people, including even the, the trade union, that's Kosato, calling for his resignation. Could this cabinet reshuffle be the beginning of the end for the Zuma administration? Okay, we've lost Owen there. Thanks for, Owen, for talking to us on the program. Owen is a market analyst based in Johannesburg. Well, moving on now, a strong earthquake has struck a remote region of Botswana near the renowned Galahari Game Reserve, sending shockwaves across the southern African country. Well, thankfully, there were no reports of injuries. The magnitude 6.5 quakes epicenter was nearly 250 kilometers northwest of the capital, Gaborone, at a depth of 12 kilometers. The tremors were also felt in neighboring South Africa. And in the Horn of Africa, Somalia's Al-Shabaab militants have